Okay, now this next thing I'm going to show you is about vector products. Now, strictly speaking, this is not a requirement of the A2 syllabus. However, it does help you to do some of the problems you've already seen a bit easier and a bit faster, a bit more efficiently and more simply, and can help you do these um, problems better. Okay, so this is also called the cross product. This is as opposed to the, the dot product or the scalar product you've seen already. So it's a different way of multiplying our vectors together, and it looks like this. So we've got our two vectors, A, B, C, and D, E, F. Uh, we use uh, our, our multiply sign in the middle there, whereas before we've used the dot sign to ref represent scalar product. When we're doing cross product, we use our multiply sign, you know, as, as is normal. Okay, so to work this out, you do. Our top line is taken from the other two lines. So we do B, F, and we subtract C, E. So you multiply them and you find their difference and you always start with the, the the number that came just underneath the line that you're looking at. So since we're looking for the top line, we take the second line and multiply it by the third line in the second one and then vice versa and subtract them. Okay, so now on the next line, we're looking for the second line for our answer. So we then go to the third line, we start with the C there. So we do C multiplied by D and we subtract A times F. So again we're looking at the two lines that we aren't interested in for our answer, we multiply the other two lines um, to, to make that cross product. And then for our last number in there, We're looking for the third line. Now, since there isn't anything underneath that C, we cycle back up to the top and we start with the A. So we are going to do, um, we're not interested in the CF because that's on our third line. So we will do A times E and we will subtract B times D. This is much easier to do with an example. Um, but what this looks like is if you have two vectors like this, then you find the cross product and it creates this vector here that um, is perpendicular to both of those two vectors. Um, now you might just have a think about um, how you know which direction it's going. You can remember it with this little symbol. With um, If you hold your right hand up, then you have your two vectors are your two fingers and your thumb. If you hold your thumb perpendicular to your two fingers, and I hope you're sitting there in front of your computer doing it right now, then your thumb creates the cross product vector. So it's the vector that comes out perpendicular from their point of intersection. Now I'll show you how this works with a, an example. So we have one, two, three, and seven, eight, nine. We're going to find the cross product of the two of them. So we do, for the first line, we're going to ignore the 1 and the 7, we're looking at the 2, 9, 3, 8, the other two lines. You start with the one that comes just below the line you're looking at on the left hand vector. So 2 times 9 minus 3 times 7. Then for our second line, we go for the next line under that, so we'll start with the 3. We do 3 times 7 minus 1 times 9. For the third line, we don't have a line underneath it, so we cycle back up to the top and we start at 1. So 1 times 8 minus 2 times 7. And then you just work out what that is. So let's see how to put this into practice with examples. So this one is asking you to find the vector of vector equation of a line of intersection of two planes. Now you have seen how to do this before where you found two points um, on that line of intersection and then found the vector equation through them. I'm going to show you how the uh, vector product or cross product can help you do that a bit faster. Okay so if we have a think about what this is looking like um, we are going to first of all need to find a point that is on that line so we can set z to be 0 in this case, that's going to give us some nice numbers. So then we've got simultaneous equations to work out y and x, and we get the coordinates of a point that is on that line of intersection. Now previously you would have gone through and found another one. Um, we don't need to at this point here. What we can think about is the normals to this plane. Now the, if we find the cross product of the normals, that will also give us a direction vector. If it's perpendicular to the normals, it's also running in the same direction as that line of intersection. So if we can find that vector that goes 
uh, that is the cross product of the normals, then we've also got the direction vector of the line of um, intersection of those two planes. So we can easily get the normals from the equations of the plane. So the first one is 1, 3, minus 6, and the second plane is 2, 7, minus 3. Now we do the cross product of those. And we get 33 minus 15, 1. So this is the direction of the vector that is now running in the same direction or parallel to that line of intersection. So to get the equation of that line, we put in the position vector that gets us onto that point, so we just choose um, those coordinates that we worked out when we set z equal to zero, and then add lambda multiples of the direction we're moving in, so that's the 33 minus 15 and 1. Okay, here's another example of using vector product to make things a little easier. So we're looking for the we want to find the Cartesian equation of the plane that's through these three points. So it looks like this. So first of all, we're going to find um, AB and AC. And again, that's just by doing um, the position vectors subtracted from each other. So B minus A and C minus A. Okay, now we have the two vectors that lie on the plane. So from there we can use the cross product to find the normal, which would be the vector that's perpendicular to those two vectors, and so it would be perpendicular to the plane. So here's the cross product. Now once we've got that, it's very easy to put that into the Cartesian equation. So from our normal, we know that it's just 11x plus 2y plus 5z equals some constant. So now we put in one of the coordinates that we know is on that plane. Since it has to satisfy that equation, we can then use that to work out our constant. So um, k is 30. So here is the final equation of the plane.